of a similar theft. KTVU's Betty Yu joins us live tonight in studio. And Betty, customers in this case ran off after getting those beauty services. That's right, Mike. So two women spent two and a half hours at a nail salon before they ran out the door without paying. And this is actually the second time this business has been hit in this fashion in a matter of months. Damn. Valley Nails and Spa in Richmond said there wasn't anything unusual or alarming about these two customers seen here on uh, surveillance video. I can think of one thing alarming than usual. About I can think of something. Uh, I quite, can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something alarming and unusual about them. Shout out to um, Virgo Sapphire, man. She, why only 200 people watching only 21 likes? Smash that. Yeah, man. Hit the like button, man. Support the channel, man. Support the channel. Support this channel, man. Hit the like button, man. Wow. Look at these heifers. Matter of months. Valley Nails and Spa in Richmond said there wasn't anything unusual or alarming about these two customers seen here on surveillance video checking in Monday afternoon. They chose the priciest manicure, pedicure, and lash extension services. Video captures the pair running away hours later. Workers witnessed them hopping into this newer model black Mercedes. I feel very disturbing. Uh, I uh, feel very uh, disrespect and uh, we feel like... Uh, uh, they shouldn't have, have any entitlement to do that, those things to us. We're not a big corp. True Huynh is the salon manager who said the two women ran out after getting $400 worth of services. Wow. Oh, my message is it, it's okay to... Uh... So they came and got the most expensive. That should have been a red flag. They want the most expensive lashes, the most expensive pedicure. That should have been a red some, flag right They figure son's got money. Watching too many rap videos. I'm telling you, man. Uh, sons don't got no money, dude. Um, but I, trust me, I get it, man. Um, you see how she gave a fake stretch as she was walking out the door? Yeah, that stretch was a like we know what that mean, but yeah, these 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 tigers don't know what that mean. Um, and listen, I'm not mad at um these people because they have to t this is their clientele this is who gets fake lashes and shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is like you got to deal with these people if you're selling fake lashes or fake lash um you're putting the fake lashes on people for a fee uh this is what it looks like man i'm you're, you're operating a business that probably has an 80 to 90 percent. Uh, so white girls, did, well, people in the chat, tell me, do the white girls go to the same um, place to get they their do. nails as the sisters? Huh? They, no, not the same place as the sisters, but they do go. They go in their suburban areas and then some of the sisters, but the sisters that go to those areas that the white girls go to, they're they're usually in a decent solid neighborhood and they're like normal sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um these people if, in order to make money, they when when these people come over to this country, they operate businesses in black communities that black people can't operate. Black people can't do this shit. So they do this, they go into these black neighborhoods and do this stuff. And that's their clientele, and you got to deal with it, man. Um, this is what you got to deal with. You want to sell stuff to black people? You got to deal with this. Manicure, pedicure, and lash extension services. Video captures the pair running away hours later. Workers witness them hopping into this newer model black Mercedes. I feel very disturbing. Uh, it's just, uh, feel very uh, disrespect, and uh, we feel like uh, uh, they shouldn't have, have any entitlement.
equipment to do that, those things to us. We're not a big corp. True Huynh is the salon manager who said the two women ran out after getting $400 mm -hmm. worth of services. Uh, my message is it, it's okay to uh, tell us that you guys can't afford it and uh, we could like compromise something in between, but it's not. <laughs> he, he talking crazy now. Cause they, it, let's just say their bill was four hundred dollars, like they said, right? Them bitches ain't got twenty bucks on them between the two of them. So he's saying he could have did it for like two fifty or some shit like that, something like that. But your kids, listen, man. These women, these women don't have no money, man. If they had some money, they would spend it on something else. They were spending, this is the type of stuff they spend money on, stuff they want. So this is a typical thing that black women do. They spend their money on stuff that they want, and they beg for what they need. And, um, yeah, I can see them having some sisters, you know, coming through every, every once in a blue moon. Um, not once in a blue moon, but, like, you know, sisters being the dominant um, clientele there. And... You got to know your clientele. By now, uh, Mr. Wynn, whatever your name is, Wynn, Wynn, you got to know your clientele to know that. Like, look, ain't no bargaining with these people. It's the last thing you want to do. Tell us that you guys can't afford it and uh, we could, like, compromise something in between. But it's not right to just to run off and treat us like we're like your slave or servant. He said nail techs at the salon barely make $200 a day. Jennifer Huynh has a message for the thieves. Hey, find yourself some income or anything like that. And if anything, do your nails at home. I learned it really quick. You could learn it too. A few months ago, a different pair of customers pulled the same stunt. The salon is now considering making customers pay before they receive services to reduce the risk. <laughs> Yo, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. But the only problem is black people don't know that that's the new policy. When you ask them to pay, you have a racial tension, tentious, a contentious situation there racially. Our uh, man, you have to pay before you, before you get your nails done. What? I've been here several times. There ain't nobody asked me to pay until I, man, what? Then she gonna look around, see a white person, and she see a white person there. Man, she will go live. Man, these motherfucking racist ass Chinese people. Man, even though they Vietnamese, they made me. They try to make us pay before we get our nails done, man. And there's a white lady in here, man, and they ain't even ask her that, man. They only asking the black people. In acting measures like that. Those um, can be contentious situations. Those can be situations that 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 create firestorms in your building, in your business. Because every time a group of sisters come in there, and they like, yo, you have to pay first. You have to pay first before you get manicure. Yo, that's just a problem. You agree with that? That's an attitude waiting to happen. At, at you lucky if all you get is the attitude. You won if all you get is the attitude. Put it on a sign and put it on the wall. Make them read it. There ain't no issues. If they can't, hey, if they can't yeah. understand it, then hey, they can't figure it out. Then bye. All of the we just want to put our words out there for uh, any other salon that uh, get to see this, uh, just to be careful. The salon manager also mentioned that he had never seen these women at the salon before. Mike. And Betty, some may debate uh, whether or not this is really a big crime. But did, saying that, did officers or deputies actually respond to the theft here? Well, the manager said he hasn't actually reported this crime because he feels that the amount stolen isn't enough to carry serious consequences. He said he mainly wanted to share a story to alert other small business owners. There you go, Betty. You live tonight here in studio. Betty, thank you. Police. 
a, a crime spree in the, the Oakland chat. Hills. We're near. What's up in the back? Oh, I said I put something in the chat too for you to play. Okay. A crime spree in the Oakland Hills, where nearly a dozen cars were hit by thieves in the middle of the night. Residents on alert left with a trail of damage. They just hit car, 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 drove up the street, went to the next cul-de-sac. It's extremely frustrating. An Oakland neighborhood waking up to shattered glass in their driveways. Good evening on this Wednesday. I'm Christina Rendon. And I'm Mike Meebeck. The crime's happening in the Oakland Hills. The suspects hitting multiple cul-de-sacs in just a matter of minutes. New at 10, KTVU's Betty Yu joins us live tonight from Oakland. Betty, this does appear to be a very coordinated crime spree. That's right, Mike. Surveillance video suggests that they planned accordingly. They had tools and a thought out strategy. Now they didn't get away with much, but they left a trail of damage. Video shows a car pull up and park in the middle of a cul-de-sac just before 3 a.m. on Tuesday. The suspects casually stroll up to different cars. They focus on the Audi and easily break the window and rummage through it before walking back to the getaway car in no apparent rush. They're getting more brazen every day. It looks like they had broke the window and then they crawled in through the window, opened the center console, ruffled through there, pulled the mask in, there were only mask and napkins in there, pulled them out onto the seat and then crawled back out because if they open the door, the alarm goes off. Longtime resident Roger Worsema said outside of one-off car break-ins in the past, the Marywood neighborhood hasn't been targeted like this. Right after this, video captured what looked like the same car and suspects at another cul-de-sac pulling the same stunt. They appeared to use glass-breaking tools and didn't set off any car alarms. Another camera angle shows them getting into a Porsche. Nearly a dozen residents woke up to shattered glass in their cars and on their driveways in the morning. It's extremely frustrating because I just, like, you know, you would think that, you know, here it would be relatively safe. And I just feel like it's the city of Oakland is just, is there any place left that is safe? This happened to me six months ago and I was down on Lakeshore. Jane Barnes reported the burglary hey. to the non-emergency police line. Damn, yo. What the fuck? Think it, think it What's up with that? <laughs> she think it's a motherfucker, boy. God damn. What the fuck? What is that? Damn. She got, she probably got a brother, man. I know she got a brother. She a mud shark. She definitely a mud shark. She, Barnes man. reported the burglary to the non-emergency police line. Even if she don't want to be a mud shark, brother's going to make her a mud shark. She got a little fatty back there. She got some Bro, CNMs. <laughs> oh my god, man. Um salute to Kofi 19. He says the bad attack happened directly in sight of a camera. Are they revamping the stop Asian hate propaganda machine for the election cycle? Um, nah, that it, it, that ain't no um conspiracy. It's it's some it's cameras everywhere in New York. You can't like do nothing and not be on camera. It's not like it, you, you just going. It's cameras everywhere. Um, Fine. And spoke to an Oakland police officer. He even said he was like, you know, like we're gonna log this and try, but we really don't have anything to go off of, you know, especially when we have homicides that we have to, you know, address first. Don on Jay Nyer also has to replace his glass window. My wife was carjacked about two and a half years back in Oakland. What struck out to me and across all the incidents is these are kids. Is there an end in sight? You know, where is it going to come from? Is it going to come from, you know, the city? Is it going to come from the police? Like, what else is there to do? I'm just at a loss. And residents said that at least in one case, these thieves took a garage door opener from one of the cars and actually used it to get inside this resident's garage and go through it. Now, it's unclear if they took anything in that case, Mike. And Betty, I mean, moving forward here, did residents tell you if they plan to actually do anything differently? 
Well, the response was pretty varied. Some said there was not much they can do. Others said they'd think about leaving their cars unlocked. Many said that they would at least warn people not to leave their garage door openers inside their vehicles. Betty, my, you live my, tonight in the city. My of cousin did Betty, that. Thank you. The my cousin. Mayor his also car kept was, his car kept getting broken into. He just he said fuck it. He left his doors all locked. <laughs> Yeah, so they don't break your window and shit. Yep, 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 yep. Wow. It's crazy. New at 5.30, a case of road rage turned into this full-out brawl. It ended with a man grabbing an AR-15. All of it